containerization so i'll just briefly explain you why do we use containerization what is containerization first and then well i'll explain you why do we use containerization so what is container a container is nothing but a tool that helps us to bundle the code along with the environment it helps us to bundle the code along with the environment how do we do that we'll see in later stages but uh, if you recall uh, yesterday's session cloud that is cloud we do that already using virtual machines right so a virtual machine is nothing but you can add your code inside that machine uh, or install all your environments inside that machine and then send that virtual machine to anyone you like but the problem with virtual machine is the virtual machine is heavy in size so a virtual machine a, a basic virtual machine might be of uh, around 1.8 gb correct right? uh, a 1.8 gb of basic ubuntu virtual machine is constructed so just to send a 100 mb code on a virtual machine we have to send 1.8 gb of data so that is not feasible every time so instead of sending a virtual machine what do we do is we use a container a container is nothing but a lightweight object is a lightweight object which contains environment a basic operating system a very basic operating system and the and the code which you want to send now where do we require and what is the need of containerization so a developer a development team might have uh, developed a module which has to be sent for testing at initial level at initial level their development team tested on their side or developed uh, say let us take an example uh, a website has been developed uh, and has been tested on uh, say apache version 2 so everything was working fine on apache 2 but on testing side some other version of apache has been used that might be some possibility that some modules won't be some modules won't work because the version of apache has been changed itself or version of some other java has been used so for these all reasons we use containerization the developer not only sends the code to the tester but also bundle as the environment that has to be used for test so there are some processes in containerization so first thing we what we require in uh, to make a container to build a container is either an ubuntu uh, environment so i'll i'll use an ubuntu instance right now if you have a windows instance you can install this tool the tool's name is docker but you cannot install uh, docker for uh, windows home uh, home basic or professional you uh, you need an enterprise version of windows you need an enterprise registered licensed version of windows to use docker but docker is an open source tool which you can use uh, using ubuntu on ubuntu it is you can use it very easily so i have just uh, logged into my ubuntu instance on aws Okay. what we'll do is we'll first install uh, docker so how do you install docker so before installing docker i need to update this uh, instance i guess so i'll just write uh, apt update yes so no Uh, now i'll just install okay i'm my root actually i'll just install docker to install docker you write apt install docker dot io so docker dot io uh, so i have already installed it in this okay it is installed docker is installed here i'll just move to my ppt right now 
process of containerization the first thing is we'll, un- we'll have to understand there is a cloud repository or hub which has any images of particular system so we have ubuntu image image of ubuntu container we have image of uh, kali linux containers we have in- uh, image of fedora containers even windows so but windows ones are paid you cannot use windows containers uh, images directly for our demonstration i'll use uh, an image of ubuntu cont- uh, ubuntu so what is an image image is nothing but i there it is an element that is been stored inside docker hub i'll just how do i create how do i get an image i have to pull the image from docker hub docker docker hub is nothing but a cloud repository of images i am just pulling an image from docker hub so all i have to write is docker pull followed by an image name docker pull followed by image name so i am just pulling an ubuntu image so i am creating it will just download that image and if you will see the image size is not that big the image size i'll just show you the image size to see the image size or any properties of that image i'll just write docker images it will show me all the downloaded images so if you see the image size of ubuntu is 73 mb so entire operating system an entire operating system with ubuntu to base is in within 73 mb of data okay so i have fetched my image now to build a container to build a container i need to run an image to build a container i need to run an image how do i do that i just write docker run docker run minus it minus it makes the container interactive it makes the container interactive minus d minus d is an option to run this image in background that is daemon okay so i am running it in background if i don't write d here it will run on the same terminal and i cannot uh, process or i cannot execute my command further so i'm writing minus d here followed by the image name that you want to run so to build a container you need to run an image to build a container we need to run an image so the image has been run and a container has been started so image has been run and a container has been started a container can be in three stages a live stage the first is a live stage the second is dead state and the third is deleted state so let us begin with a live stage so currently we have started a container we can see the container which has been started by writing docker ps ps command shows me all the alive containers right now inside the system so let me just show you so there is one container that is live right now which is id is this name is this image is this so i use ubuntu image to uh, construct this container right so this is uh, a new container has been started to access the container so now whatever what was the purpose of building a container we wanted to insert the code inside the container as well as the environment inside the container and then send it to the tester so that the tester itself can test the entire code along with the uh, along with the environment and not the code itself so to go inside the container we need to execute the container so we are executing the container now Hello. 
Hello. Hello? Uh, I think I was disconnected for some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I think I was, uh, did I, uh, did, uh, were you able to see the creation of the container? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, through the Docker PS, we are able to see it. Okay, okay. So, execution okay. is not Okay, so to uh, go inside the container, we need to execute the container. So, we'll just write docker exec again minus it. It is to make it interactive, followed by the container id. You can see the container id listed here. The same container ID need to paste it here. Followed by bash. Why do I? Why am I writing bash? Is I'm just I'm just uh, saving my resources. I'll just enter the bash of this, मतलब the terminal of this container. जो Ubuntu का container हमने बनाया है, उसके terminal के अंदर जा रहे हैं. So I'll just go inside the container now. So if you see Earlier, I was here inside my Ubuntu instance given by AWS. Now I have entered another instance. This is my container. I am inside my container. If you want to really check whether I am inside my container or not, I'll just write sudo command here. Sudo something. Sudo docker. It will say sudo command not found. Why is that? Because this container is a very lightweight operating system, has a very lightweight operating system. So anything that you want, you will have to install inside this uh, operating system. It does not even have a sudo command yet. Okay. If I want, if I, if you want to again check, I'll write Docker command, say Docker PS. It also, it does not have Docker inside it. The Docker that was installed was inside the the Docker that was installed earlier, it was inside my Ubuntu instance given by AWS. But now currently I'm inside the container and I'm not using the AWS instance. So if I want to use Docker inside this, I'll have to install Docker again. Our problem statement was I wanted to install, I wanted to install say Apache 2 server and the code inside it. I wanted to install the Apache 2 server and the code inside it. So all I have to do is I'll just ls here. I'll see the libraries here. I'll just create a new file. So I'll just create a directory uh, with name yash demo. I'll go inside yash demo. In mind that whatever changes I'm doing is the happening inside the container and not are not affecting the actual AWS instance. Okay. So I'll just create a file here. I'll write, uh, okay. To create a file, I'll need nano at, at least, but this will ha not have nano also. So I'll install nano. So I'm updating the container right now. I'm not updating the AWS instance. I've updated the container and installed Nano. Nano is just a uh, text editor in uh, Linux. Okay. So I have installed Nano, I guess. Okay, I've installed Nano. I can use Nano. Creating a file called as uh, .txt. Okay, so this is a text editor. Try.txt, I'll just write some text. This is inside the container. And just save it. Okay. So I've saved that file. I'll also install AP, uh, Apache server here. apt install. So you can install n number of softwares that you want. I'm just showing you Apache. I'm installing Apache. Server here.
okay so it has installed apache and i have created a file that is try.txt okay created a file called as try.txt what i'll do is i'll just come out of this container i'll just come out of this I'll just right exit if you see i'm back to my original instance i'm back to my original instance. If I check here, there will be no such folder as yash dot. Why? Because because the the folder was created inside the container. Okay. Even if I want to check, there is no Apache installed here. So right? Apache two. Apache two is not. It is telling me to install Apache two again. Are we understanding? Yes. Okay. So currently we have created a container. We have created a container, installed Apache two, and we have started my code files, which is represented by one txt file right now. Okay. Now, what I'll do is I'll just create an image. So how do I save this container? i will have to save this to save this container i cannot save this container is a is a live object as soon as i stop this container it becomes dead so before stopping this object i'll just commit this container as soon as i commit a container it becomes an image so to to create an image i need to commit a container to create an image i need to commit a container so i'm not writing docker Commit followed by the container ID. So I'll require the container ID. I'll write Docker ps. So Docker commit. I'll just copy the container ID and followed by followed by an image name that you want to give. An image name that you want to give. The image name that I want to give is I am just writing it slash one two three four sha slash uh, ftp demo. Okay. So this commit is local commit. This, this is this is a local commit. Yes. Okay. This is a local commit. So now if I list my images, I should have two images. One is the Ubuntu image that I had downloaded, and the other image is the one I have just uh, created. And the difference between these two images is this: the Ubuntu image is a basic operating system image, whereas the new image that I have created has Apache server installed with the code installed in it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so after commit ID, uh, the name which you have given, that is the repository name or user defined name which you need to give. This, this name, the image name. Okay, image. Okay. okay, this is the image name that I want to uh, create. The image, the new image that I want to create, uska naam hai. Sir, uh, I think that every uh, image name whatever you give is uh, uh, in this small case. So like, is it your like case sensitive or like some any cache special characters? Okay, I'll just explain the nomenclature of the image. I was going to do it later on. Uh, mm -hmm. What? So I'll just explain you. So there, this image name has some nomenclature with it. What is that nomenclature? In the further steps, we'll be pushing this image to the Docker Hub. In further steps, we'll be pushing this image to Docker Hub. So that anyone else can access that image. So your tester also can access that image. So for testing, he'll have to download that image, run that image to bake at container, and then go inside the container to test it. So to push that image, I have to follow some nomenclature. And what is that nomenclature? It is Docker Hub ka username, the username of Docker Hub, followed by a slash. Followed by any arbitrary name that you want to give, it accepts all the characters, all the special characters, except dollar sign. You cannot use a dollar sign. Okay. 
so it is starting with a username followed by a slash and an arbitrary string that you want to give to the image with any uh, character except the dollar sign as soon as you click enter it will create an Im uh, image on your local repository it is still on the local repository right now okay uh, we'll see how do you push it to uh, uh, remote repository later but uh, for now we'll continue with our session so we were at container stage we were, we have completed the execution of container now let us stop the container if you can see the container is still alive let us clear this out the container is still alive how do you see a live container you write docker.ps to stop a container to make it into a dead state you need to stop a container so i write stop and followed by the container id so by this i have i have made the container dead if you want to see there are no more con alive containers right now a dead container does not mean that we have deleted the container a dead container we does not mean we have deleted a container we can again access the container just by writing ps minus a minus a stands for all the containers all the containers whether dead or alive so you see i have written minus a it shows me the earlier container it shows me the earlier container and status is exited that means the container is dead to remove the dead container to delete the dead container all i have to do is i have to write docker rm rm stands for remove remove will delete a specific container and the container id now if i see ps minus a there is nothing there that means the container is totally been deleted the container has been totally been deleted i'll just go through it again so to go inside an alive container you need to execute a container to make a container dead you need to stop a container and to delete a container to delete a container you need to remove the container rm okay so we have already performed the next step that is the commit step we have created an image and from the image now we will just push the image to the docker hub account so for pushing it to docker hub account first you will need an account on docker hub okay so the url is hub.docker.com hub.docker.com so i already have an account here so creating an docker hub account is free it does not charge you anything again private repositories creating private repositories are chargeable just login so you can see these are all the images that i have created earlier and the nomenclature is the same the nomenclature is the username the username you can see my username here username followed by a slash followed by any arbitrary string that i want to give okay so now let me push the newly created let me push the newly created image to the docker hub account all i have to first i need to log in to my docker hub so i'll write docker login docker login it will ask me for my username so yash 1 2 3 4 shah is my username and i it will ask me for the password so i'll i'm just entering my password okay so it says login succeeded can you see this login succeeded what i'll do is i'll have to push the newly created image to the docker hub account so just let me find the newly created image how do you see the list of images you just write docker images and i want to push this particular image on my docker hub 
account. I want to push this particular image on my Docker Hub account. I write Docker push followed by the image name. Docker push followed by the image name. I hit enter. It tells me that it is preparing. It is just pushing my container. Uh, sorry, it is pushing my image. Let it push. Okay. So it has been pushed successfully. And if we see on my Docker Hub page, I'll just refresh this page. Okay. You'll see a new image listed on my profile. That is the 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 uh, image that we just pushed. You can click this. Okay. Okay. So on the tester side, he does not need to log in right now. The tester just can pull this image just by knowing the name of the image. Do you remember how we pulled the image? We pulled it by Docker pull followed by the image name. In the earlier example, I just pulled an Ubuntu image by writing Ubuntu. But now if the tester wants to pull my image, he'll write yash one two three four sha slash fdp. What will this do is it will pull that image. I'll just show you how to pull that image. First, I'll uh, delete the image from my side. So I'll just delete this image. To delete an image, I'll have to write Docker RMI. RMI stands for remove image. Remove image and the image name. So it says something has been deleted. Okay. Something has been deleted. Now let me check Docker images. So it says I have only one image that is Ubuntu image. I have deleted my uh, created image. Okay. For now, let me just log out of the login site. Okay. I have logged out. Now let us assume that I am on the tester site and the tester wants to test a newly available code. The developer, what the developer will do is he will say that I have pushed an image with this image name. You test that image. That is it. You test that image. So on the tester side, what he'll do is he'll use Docker pull and the image name. The image name was Yash one two three four a slash fdp demo one. So if it is checking, it is downloading an image. It has downloaded image. Uh, it has downloaded a newer image. And if I list it again, you can see the image again. And this image will have all the things that we have did it in uh, to the container. So that now on the tester side, what he'll do is he'll create a container of this image. How do we create a container of the image? To create a container of an image, we need to run the image, right? We need to run the image. So now the tester will run this image. Docker run minus it minus d followed by the image name. Now which image do I, am I running? The newly created image. I have created the image. I have created the container of an image. So to check the container ID, what do I write? I write Docker ps. I get a new container ID. Now to go inside the container and to test the image, to test this particular code, I have to go inside the container and to go inside the container, I need to execute that container. So I'll go inside the container and execute the container. So Docker exec minus it, the container ID followed by bash. So now if you see, I am inside the container. Earlier I was inside the instance of AWS. Now when I am inside the container. If you want to check our code, I'll just ls 
if you remember we had created a folder called as yash demo inside that earlier uh, container we have the same folder here yes am i audible yes sir yes 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 okay so we have same folder so cd space i'll go inside and just ls it you see there is a try.txt that we had to get and this try.txt and if you remember we had also installed nano that is a text editor so i'll use nano again this is inside that we have the contents also inside that file as it is so the tester can test the code within the container itself the tester can test the code within the container itself if you want to check the apache was also installed so service apache 2 apache 2 is not running it is installed but it is not running so i can start it so it says apache 2 is running so the apache 2 server which is used for websites is running now but where is it running it is running inside the container and not in my actual operating system it is inside the container then so now tester can test anything he want okay uh, the tester can test anything he want he can exit the container and delete the container if he want so this was all for the uh, concept of containerization